I, I don't believe there was disrespect. There were things that were absolutely taken out of context. There's video. Lauren Boebert participated in a televised debate for the new district that she's running in, and it did not go well for her, to put it mildly. Her GOP colleagues, as well as the moderator, talked about her poor poll numbers and whether or not she could cost Republicans that seat altogether. Her GOP colleagues attacked her for being ineffective. And we're going to get to all of that, but I'm not going to bury the lead because the Beetlejuice incident came up. And the moderator was not buying any of her bullshit. But what makes this moment even funnier is how it came up. So another Republican that's in this race, who she's running against, Mike Lynch, resigned from leadership because his DUI arrest came up. Now, the moderator had asked him about that and specifically asked him why he chose to hide that fact from his colleagues. And he doesn't really know how to respond, right? He's fumbling over his words. And he tries to get himself out of this corner. Now, guess how he tries to do that? By uh, bringing up Bobo's Beetlejuice incident, which is so funny to me. And guess what? It actually worked because the moderator then adjusted his attention to her. And that's when she was forced to defend herself. And things went downhill very fast. This happened, you know, uh, at a time that was, you know, this was before even we had theater incidents or anything else that was embarrassing to folks. And so, um, no, uh, you know, serving in public life is hard work and uh, exposing your life to it is, uh, you know, a, a personal decision. And, and I chose not to. That was about the softest reference that he could have made. But do you want to talk about the theater thing? Uh, sure. So, Kyle, I, I certainly um, have owned out, uh, owned up to uh, my Ooh. night out in Denver. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've gone on that public ad apology tour and I'm grateful for the mercy and grace that has been shown. But I'm I'm not going to continue to live life in shame and um, be beat up by this. And, you know, I, I would like to go back to we're my legislative gonna, we're record gonna, we're for just gonna, a second. We're not, gonna, we're not gonna do that. You had plenty of time to answer the question. You chose not sure. to. That's fine. I just want to make sure. And you, and you have Don't apologized worry. for the theater incident. And I certainly I, have. And I just want to make sure. Did you apologize for the behavior that went on with you well, and see, your I date or the vaping? Kyle, or did you, so, so Kyle, or did you apologize, you or pardon me, or did you apologize for lying to voters about what you did that night and the disrespect that you showed to service workers that night? What specifically were you apologizing there, I, for? I, I don't believe there was disrespect. There were things that were absolutely taken out of context. There's video of your interactions with service workers. I'm just, I'm asking, right. are you well, apologizing it's been, for the it's lying been reported to voters? That I flipped or the someone off and I did not. So, okay. I mean, I, I think it's it's been very mischaracterized. Um, I'm, I'm apologizing for you, Kyle. Clark um, getting footage and releasing that um, and, and people seeing this in a very private moment. Certainly. It was very um, important to figure but, out but whether you Kyle, were telling listen, the truth you just had or whether a public agency was Cast lying Denver. about your conduct. You Either just had way, a, an interview with CityCast for for Denver and you were saying how disgusting it is to talk record about your someone without their Congress. knowledge. Let's talk and about the use you of did that in very Congress. same thing and released it Members to the request world. Damn. First of all, let me just say that that moderator had no chill and uh, good for him. That right there is how you effectively moderate a debate. Now, second of all, I'm just impressed at this point by her defense. Honestly, kudos to her, because I don't think that anybody in the entire country would be bold enough to refer to their public groping as a private moment. See, you weren't in private, Bobo. And that's kind of the problem. But yet you're going with that defense, which is just astonishing to me. And she's she's doing what she did in public and she's pretending like her privacy was being violated because it was picked up on security cameras excuse me the audacity of lauren bobert my god and i love how she's also at some point she's trying to during that clip she tried to hypocrisy burn the moderator because i guess he previously said that it's wrong to record someone in public without their knowledge but see even with the way that you quoted him He's making an important distinction, right? Most people know that they are being recorded when they are at a public venue. Most stores you walk into have security cameras. Just because you're too stupid to know that a public venue that you were attending had security cameras doesn't mean that you get to play the whole, I didn't know I was being recorded card and pretend like your privacy was being violated because they caught you jerking off your date. Unreal. Now to make matters worse, She's still pretending like she wasn't being disrespectful to the service workers when she was. And this is a bad thing to lie about because she's inadvertently going to make people revisit this incident and remember why they're so disgusted by her. But let's do that because, I mean, if you're going to 
lie, then we're going to fact check you. So if you'll recall, she was caught vaping in front of a pregnant woman and jerking off her date. And when employees came to escort her off the premises, well, she initially refused to leave and dropped the do you know who I am card. And then she threatened to call the mayor. So, yes, there was disrespect and her refusal to own up to it demonstrates that she hasn't actually learned anything from this incident and she hasn't grown. And that's too bad for her because it's still a sticking point for Republican voters in that district. For example, CBS News reports, quote, I don't like her, said registered Douglas County Republican Brian LaJoey. Bobert, who currently represents District 3, has made headlines for her controversial behavior and opinions. Quote, just her behavior. I'm a person that believes that you should behave appropriately when in elected office, no matter the party, no matter the person. And I don't think that she fulfills that role. I will vote for someone else, said LaJoey. And that's one of many Republican voters that news agencies have spoken to that have cited that incident as one of the main reasons why they just don't like her. Remember, we're talking about people in Ken Buck's old district, a pretty traditional anti-Trump Republican whose constituents care about respect and civility and tradition. So it's not that surprising that his former constituents aren't going to be receptive to Bobo shenanigans. In fact, they're pretty turned off by it. But there's more from this debate that I want to show you. However, I do first want to Talk about why Bobert chose to run in the 4th District in the first place instead of the 3rd, because that's really important for this next clip, because she nearly lost the 3rd District to a Democrat in 2022. Now, polls show she wouldn't have fared any better the next time, so she chose to run in Ken Buck's old seat the moment that he announced he was retiring. Now, the reason why she chose to do this is because, in theory, she could insulate herself from any Democratic challenger because the 4th District is much more red than the 3rd District. The problem is she may have made a catastrophic miscalculation here because an internal poll released by her potential Democratic opponent, Ike McCorkle, shows that she's actually losing that seat in the general election by 14 points. He's polling at 43% while she's at 27%. Now, there is a caveat. 33% of voters are still undecided, but still, this is a Republican stronghold. And the fact that she is losing to a Democrat, at least based on this one poll, is very devastating. Now, she responded to the poll by coping and going on to blame uh, Republican voters. Yes, Republican voters, because she nearly lost her 2022 re-election campaign. Let's watch. First of all, I'm not trusting any internal polls that are uh, secretly released um, by a Democrat campaign. And I think the Democrat who released that internal poll needs to be focused on his own primary, which he is scheduled to lose um, to his opponent, Trish. We have a special election that is taking place in Colorado on June 25th. And she has a huge advantage being the Democrat nominee uh, for that special election. I do believe that Greg Lopez will ultimately win that special election. and we all all need to get out that vote. In Colorado's third district, we did have a very close election, but we also had 50,000 Republicans not to show up to vote. And maybe it's because those Republicans were frustrated at other elected Republicans who have failing conservative records, who refused to stand with President Trump, and they felt abandoned statewide and nationwide. But no matter what, this is the time for us to show up and get out the vote. I do not believe me being here is um, making this a vulnerable seat. This is a huge move for conservatives in Colorado. So just to be clear, uh, Ms. Bobert, you blame Republican voters for the fact that you nearly lost a safe seat and not your own conduct. It, when 50,000 Republican voters do not show up and think that their vote does not matter, that does make an impact on elections. Maybe you shouldn't have told them that the election was stolen then. Ever think about that? Because if you tell people that their votes don't matter because Democrats are just going to steal the elections anyway, then, of course, they're going to be disillusioned with the system and choose to just not participate. But what she's saying doesn't even make sense, because if Republican voters are specifically disappointed because so much of the GOP are rhinos, they're fake Republicans and they're not standing with Trump, wouldn't they, in theory, come out to support you instead? support you overwhelmingly since you're one of the few non-rhino Trump sycophants in Congress? Well, they didn't, so why would they protest you if the GOP being more like you is what, what, is what would make them happy? It's just nonsensical, right? They didn't come out to support you because they don't like you, and she doesn't want to admit that, right? And it seems like voters in the 4th District don't really like you as well. 
And you can't blame rhinos for that. You told people that you're a family values conservative, then you got caught jerking off your date in public. If you lose this race, you will have no one to blame but yourself. But her electability has become a huge concern and her opponents are pointing out that vulnerability as is the moderator. Who here believes that if Republican primary voters nominate Ms. Boebert, that she could realistically lose in November? Mr. Lynch, Ms. Flora, and Mr. Yu say they believe that she could realistically lose. Mr. Sonnenberg, Mr. Holtorf do not believe that she could realistically well, lose. Let me, in, let me in clarify. November. I answered the question, so I didn't know. Okay. You wanted Do you believe that she could lose in November? It's very possible. Yes. Okay, I'm going to raise my hand just to clarify. Ms. It's possible. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bobert, an opportunity to respond to what they've said. Yes. Well, it's interesting to hear Democrat talking points from my Republican opponents talking about um, this purge and purify process in the Republican Party. We just want people who are elected who actually represent our values. Ouch. So four out of five of her GOP opponents think that she is a political liability. And as you saw, she's not too happy about that. And she accused them of using Democrat talking points. Now, the reason why she said that is because in a different portion of the debate, which you didn't see, her opponent, uh, she was asked about comments that she made. It seems like in the comments she was indirectly referencing the Beetlejuice incident, but she didn't bring that up when she was asked the question by the moderator. Instead, she talked about, you know, how some Republicans, cough, cough, Lauren Boebert, they're subjecting other Republicans to these purity tests for not being, you know, too pro-Trump or whatnot. And that behavior is turning off a lot of voters. She, she was seemingly trying to pivot and talk about, like, what Bobo is doing to turn off voters, but that not being the Beetlejuice incident. I didn't show you the clip because it was a very long, meandering answer with a lot of superfluous information that didn't really matter. But for the most part, what she said kind of led Bobert to say, oh, you're using Democrat talking points, right? But I think that there's something there to this notion that Bobo is turning off a lot of GOP voters, namely ones who were represented by Ken Buck, who's an anti-Trump Republican. And here she is coming into that district telling his constituents that the problem with the GOP is that they're not pro-Trump enough. They're all rhinos, right? It's just ridiculous. But that's how she kind of evades this question about her own electability. But that wasn't the only thing that they hit her on because her opponents also called her out for being ineffective. Yeah, well, I thank you. And I appreciate listening to the words of people that have never really passed a law here on the stage <laughs> to include Ms. Boebert and I have Ms. passed Flora. laws, thank you. And uh, Ms. Boebert, how many bills did you prime sponsor? I said 38, I prime sponsored, not co-sponsor because you can co-sponsor post facto. Anybody can put their name on a bill after it passes. How many bills did you prime sponsor in the U.S. Congress that actually were signed by the President of the United States? Uh, I, so thank you so much, uh, Richard. You know, it's interesting that you're touting the legislation that you have passed. Um, you also say that you are a no-nonsense conservative. Well, I think the voters back home should know that a no-nonsense conservative should not have a failing liberty score. We have the Independent Institute who r <coughs> scores representatives for their legislative record. And if you are not voting how you campaign, well, then you get a negative impact. And I'm the only person you like to here answer the question who, or would you I'd like to I talk about liberty Thank scores. You, you can you. answer the question, ma'am. It's okay. Will. So, I asked a very specific question. Please one, answer. One of my favorite pieces of legislation that has been signed into law is my Pueblo Jobs Act that creates at least 1,000 jobs in Pueblo, Colorado. So as you can see, the general sentiment towards her is that she's a loudmouth who's all talk and no action. And her opponents are kind of positioning themselves as the real Republicans. That's what she's doing too. But they're saying, no, we're the real Republicans and we actually get things done unlike her. And at this point in time, honestly, it is impossible to tell how things are going. But I will say that she just had her worst fundraising haul in four years. And this is according to the Washington Examiner, which is no liberal outlet. But with that being said, she still managed to outraise all of her opponents because, you know, she has the most name recognition. And in American politics, money does move mountains. So, you know, you don't you don't really know how this is going to go. Her being a fundraising behemoth before didn't stop her from nearly losing in 2022. So honestly, anything can happen. We'll just have to wait and see, but I'm crossing my fingers and my toes that she's defeated because that would be one of the best results we can hope for. Hopefully she's defeated in the primary, but it might be even funnier if she wins the primary and then loses in the general to a Republican or to a Democrat rather in Ken Buck's old district. That would be poetic justice if you ask me, but I'll take any loss I can get. Primary, general, I just wanted to lose, so people in CD4, make it happen.
penis and balls vagina penis and balls vagina p word and balls vagina p word and balls vagina ass come ass come ass come vagina she stroked my face with the vagina she stroked my penis and balls